set. Good. Thank you, recording. Um, and just a reminder, please announce yourself for Sheila uh, when you're making comments so she knows who to attribute them to. Okay, welcome, everyone. It's, um, we do have a quorum, and I'm going to start the meeting with just, if I may, a moment of silence for those who have uh, incurred a loss or pain or, and for our first responders during these um, very difficult times. Thank you for that. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of September 24th, and I believe you all have a copy if you've had a chance to review them. Are there any edits or changes to be made or suggested? All right, hearing none, I'll just ask for a motion to have the minutes accepted. Hi, it's Linda. I'll make that I... motion, it's Suzanne, um, okay. Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Linda. <laughs> That's okay. I'll Linda second will take it. That a, Linda a will second. second it. And without objections, thank you for that. And under old business, the first item is the Board of Health report. Carolyn? Um, July, everything this summer, right even up until now, has either been about Are you there? Did, did we lose Carolyn? We lose her. That was so funny. I thought I lost the whole call. I thought I lost it. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Carolyn. Hello. You, we have you, Carolyn. You're back. Oh, okay. It, July, it was mostly about the board, the, the health in the high school and all the changes in the rules. And this past month, it's been mostly the virus, plus now the, the uh, problems with the schools and the virus. All right. Thank you for that. Well, I'm just curious, was there any discussion of uh, the flu season at, the, at any recent meetings? Not a lot. Okay. Everybody seems to be really focused in on, on the, uh, especially the college students. It was my whole neighborhood down the street from me. Um, you can hardly go down Reef Road because the students um, have been blocked from going to the campus because of so much of the virus. Yeah. Mm. So, right. Carolyn, I'm not sure. Does that mean they're out on the street or their cars are there? No, the ca you can hardly go down the street. It's because it, the cars are on both sides of the street. <clears throat> And yeah, it's like a one students. one way road. They had to um discourage parking near the dump because the trucks couldn't even get by. Wow. That's how many wow. cars there are down there now. I agree, Whoa. Carolyn. It's Linda because I live near there too. Yeah, it's just it's it's like almost impossible and they're all home. I mean, I go down that that area a lot and um you you cannot find a parking space during the day. Are so apparently, it's Suzanne Carolyn. I'm sorry. Um, are there any kinds of changes in policy in place as far as the police department to better rectify the issue? I mean, I don't know how you could do it, but is there any? The only thing that they've done so far, if you know where the park is, yes, um, Veterans Park, there right. are signs up now that you cannot. You cannot park on the street there. Uh, People park okay. in the parking area, but because there were so many cars on the street, the um, the trucks were having trouble either going to the right or the left. They had not; they oh. didn't have enough room. Sheesh. So you can't park um, that close to the um, the dump entrance now. And that's old Dam Road, right over there. No, the it's Reef Road. Road. Reef Road. Okay. Carolyn, is the, is the, um, the Board of Health meeting um, by conference call, or are they meeting on site? Uh, it's, it's like what we're doing now. Okay. Well, thank you for that, and thank you for representing us on, a, on that. Are there any other questions for Carolyn? Okay. Thank you for that. Has Laura joined? All right. With your concurrence, I'll move the retreat, um, Laura's report on the retreat down a bit. Um, 
and ask if uh, Loretta would report on the exciting developments with the Committee for People with Disabilities. Hello, everybody. Um, this is Loretta. And we do have exciting news. Um, last week we had a meeting, the committee had a meeting with Tom Bremer, who is the chief administrative officer and also the ADA officer for the town. And we discussed um, efforts and our wishes to, uh, we presented why we thought that our committee should become a standalone commission. And he was very receptive. He spoke with First Selectman Kupchik um, since that time and then gave Julie word that we have a green light to proceed by presenting our, by presenting to the Board of Selectmen to become a full commission. And the plan would be, if, if, if the Board of Selectmen approves, that we would get a commission with a three-year life that would be renewable once we demonstrate the need which seems very fair and very exciting. So I want to extend a congratulations heartily to all of you who have worked so hard to achieve this prior to me coming on board and recognize Chris Burbank as well in her absence um, for spearheading all of this from the onset. Um, so that was very exciting. And the next steps that we are working on, um, the committee, um, we have we have a shared Google Doc um, for the committee mem for committee members to truly put together a, a draft of a, a charge for us that we would use, which would specify what our mission is, our purpose, goals, um, the makeup of the commission, what that would look like, and under which department it would we would fit under, and um, so that's on a shared, uh, shared Google Doc that we can all edit into. Um, discussions that we need to have, and we'll, ideally we're going to meet again. We'll have, a, we'll have a phone conference next week to talk further about it. But we'll um, need to determine which staff person we, we recommend um, going under. And we had talked about um, things that are that we've just that are under consideration as should it be um, staying under human services or other options include under um, human resources or even under um, Bernie had suggested that we consider going under um, Tom Bremer as the as the ADA officer. So oh. we'll discuss that and perhaps we could even bring it back to. Tom and Brenda, and and hear their perspectives and what their recommendations are. Um, so that's that. The other thing that we're doing is we are um, starting with an informal list of recommended commission members. Um, our Human Services Commission um, committee members who are interested in, in being on the commission um, are asked to put their names forward to say that they would like to be on it. I've only heard formally from Barbara that she said she'd like to stay with Human Services Commission um, and not switch over to disability. And, and I would be switching over, though um, that's a, I will have a separate conversation about the timing of that. Um, and, and then for me and Linda and Laura, We'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, we'll talk more. And let's see what other things. Oh, and then if anyone in the full Human Services Commission has suggestions and recommendations on who would be a good um, candidate to be on the commission, please share those names with us. Um, ask them to submit a resume or give us the contact information, and we could reach out to them and then that, and then, and then that ask them. Okay. Loretta, this is George. Could, uh, could you repeat, whom do you go to next? <coughs> the next is that we need to draft up a charge, which basically outlines what it is that we are, what we propose the commission would do, what it's, and who would be on the commission, what it would look like, um, and then present that to the Board of Selectmen. Um, 
Oh, and something I forgot to mention. Um, so we would present that to the Board of Selectmen at a Board of Selectmen meeting, um, and that would probably involve um, all of us, if whoever wants to attend, but in terms of presenting Bernie and the committee, and we have to figure out what that would look like specifically. And if we would do it at the next Board of Selectmen meeting, which I'm not sure when that is. I meant to look it up before the call today, and I forgot. Um, and I think that Mr. Bremer said it would be in December. December? Okay. So, or is so, that RTM? Um, That's RTM. So, so we would present to the selectmen. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention in terms of in terms of membership is that we talked about ways of if if the staff if the town staff person was. HR or um, Mr. Bremer as the, as the ADA officer, then ways of staying connected with human services and and having ex officio members um, so that Julie could be an ex officio um, member of the commission and and we would also invite. Um, Rob Mancusi, who's the director of special education, to be. Um, so these are potential potential ex officio members that we would, you know, what I think what our role is is to propose a model that we see how to make this go forward and then present it to the selectmen and have them hear it and let us know what they like and don't like. Uh, Loretta, it's Suzanne. Um, have you done any research on other towns or school districts or whatever? that have implemented a similar commission which you're proposing just so maybe you can base whatever you know direction you want to go in on another successful municipality that has instituted the same type of commission yes um oh great there's been Good. extensive over the past couple of years it's been extensive um review and modeling from other towns and great. when julie put together the draft um, she did pull from other from other municipalities as well to Great. recognize what their charges look like. Yeah, it's Linda. Uh, we did we looked at quite a few towns who have commissions. Uh, it's Julie. There's one one other step before we can go before board of selectmen. Our committee would need to bring to the full commission the charge to be approved. Uh, to of course, right. 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 Thank you, Julie. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I completely forgot to mention that. But that no, but of, but of course we would have to. That the I mean that that's the commission bringing it forward. Right. So. Yep. So yes. Is there as, any so as the committee is working on it, it would be in preparation to bring to the full commission. Exactly. It's um, Suzanne. Do you have to have RTM approval, or is that something that you're looking into as part of your proceeding forward? Mm. We no, would not under this floor. Julie, what's the name of it? What it's called? We, um, we would not need RTM approval under this model. Okay, great. Right. Hmm. Loretta, it's uh, Linda. So with the charge, and we all got copies of that that Julie put together. Um, you want us to kind of edit that and make suggestions? Yes. I. Um, if you go to it. You'll see that I, I, I pasted it up there. I just formatted it from what Julie sent, but then I started making my suggested edit so you could see the suggested changes that I'm making. And it's set up so that each of us, as we make our own, we could tweak it together. Um, okay. So that way we could, it should be, a, it could be a conversation. There's opportunity for comment as well as editing, but it's um, suggested edit so we could see what we're all proposing. Okay. Similarly, with the, there's an Excel spreadsheet there as well that has suggestions for membership. Correct. And this is Bernie. Presumably, the goal would be to have a working draft available for the November commission meeting if the, um, if the intent is to meet the requirements of a, uh, a BOS meeting in, de in December. Would that be correct? That would be, except that our commission meeting in November is scheduled on Thanksgiving. 
Uh, so we're, uh, that will be the Thursday before, be the 19th. Do we mean the Thursday before? Okay. Right. So this committee meeting will be, it's Julie, sorry, it will be the 12th. And hopefully we'll approve a draft for the um, commission to vote on. That, I think that's pretty doable. Do you, Loretta? I definitely think it's doable, yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. And I'm... Um, I just want to um, reemphasize again that the, the intent would be that people representative of the community would be active commissioners on this. Um, and I think the allocation was three seats, if I'm correct, and that would include a broad range of um, impacted individuals, including people with disabilities, both physical and other types of disabilities, mm. caregivers, and people associated with the community. So um, if, the, if you know or are aware of candidates that might be interested in that, I think it would be good to start thinking about identifying them or at least contributing to the list of possible commission members on that. And Mr. Chairman, it's Suzanne. Um, and when you say people with other types of disabilities, quote unquote, are you referring to people also with issues that relate to social, emotional disabilities as well? I think from the get go, the committee has been taking a relatively robust and inclusive view of disabilities. So I don't want to, right. I think it's physical and all others. It would be the way I Fantastic. would describe it. Um, and the I need would for say it. Yeah. By Loretta or Julie, if that's not the case. So, Suzanne, um, this is Loretta. So just just hey. to reiterate what Bernie is saying. Yes, hidden and, and hidden and visible disabilities of all sorts. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, are there any other questions related to the report? Okay, if I could just add my, um, my seconds on all of the work that has been done to bring us to this point. I mean, it seems a while ago that we first, that the commission first had the idea of looking at disabilities as a new avenue and focus area. And uh, it's been a lot of hours, a lot of meetings, a lot of outreach. But I think it's, it's tremendous that we're at this point and on, a, or on the, um, the verge of having a commission to look at this particular issue in the town. So it's a... Uh, thank you for all those who have spent the hours at meetings and participating in this. It's been a long haul, but I hope, I hope the payoff that we have here has been worth the effort. So thank you again. Uh, did I hear Laura join us? Oh, my heavens. Thank you, Bernie. I'm so sorry, everybody, to um, disrupt the meeting. I dialed the wrong number. I dialed last month. <laughs> so I was hanging there with that obnoxious music. In any event, yes, I am on. You're welcome. <laughs> so, Laura, um, first of all, welcome. And uh, we deferred the report on the retreat um, off of the agenda, but would now be a good time to hear what you have to report? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, uh, we have had, you talk about a robust committee. I have to say this retreat committee has been so dedicated and um, very enthusiastic about moving forward and finding a direction for how we would want to, you know, um, meet as a group and talk about issues that we think are relevant to the commission and what we do and, um, you know, how we want to move forward. And I really give everybody credit, George, Loretta, and Barbara, Everybody participated every week for, we had our fourth meeting this past week. So we have been uh, at it, and we included our facilitator, Dorothy Brennan, in our last two meetings, which has been very helpful to us because that's her uh, specialty, is facilitation and pinpointing um, issues and targeting, you know, where we want to go. She knows how to get, get right to it, and that's what we needed. And, um, she's, and she's willing to do it, you know, as a volunteer to the town. So that is very kind of her. Um, so 
the the net result was we were going to try to target our next meeting November 19th to hold our retreat but several factors came into play the fact that we're still in covid and one of our objectives is to try to be together physically if we can because it'd be much more of an engaging um, session if we could be face to face. So that was one of the things. Um, and the second was that we have some movement of our commission, the Human Services Commission. For instance, our beloved chair is going to be stepping down at the end of this year, Bernie. And uh, so that creates an opening. And now with this new commission being created, it may create several other openings, depending upon who decides to stay on human services or who decides to go over to disability. So we've got three expiring terms, which I don't know if George covered that yet, but um, not yet. we thought, it would, oh, you have? Okay, thank you, George. No, 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 we not yet, Laura. Be, oh, you haven't. Oh, okay. We thought it'd be best to wait until we have all of the new members of this commission together and then um, proceed with our retreat. So we're probably looking at, depending upon where, we at with, where we're at with COVID by then, hopefully first quarter, latest second quarter of next year, when we would all be able to gather together, we would have our new members in place, and we think it would just be a, a, a much more cohesive approach to the retreat. So that's where we're at with our retreat, Bernie. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I know a lot of work has gone in to get us to this point, and I think it's been very, very useful and helpful. I think it will give you a, fresh, a head start in what you want to accomplish uh, for the program year next, next year as well. So I just want to thank all the members who have been, again, uh, participated in the development of a plan for this and brought us to this point. I think there's a good framework for proceeding, so uh, thank you. Laura, and thank you for the uh, committee members. Are there any questions about the retreat or the intent? Okay, well, hearing none, um, the next item on the agenda is the friends. Are, are, do we have any news or updates there, Julie, that we want to report? We do. They gave me a report. So they gave me a report to um, let you know what their activities have been during COVID. Um, so they have really stepped up and been sponsoring a lot of programs and activities for us. Um, they, provide, they did a barbecue in July for us. They hosted and paid for a weekly current events um, meeting for the summer with a historian that everybody loves. Um, that was, I think, eight or nine sessions. Um, they helped us with our emergency bags for homebound seniors for um, the hurricane season and for snow season. They provided the bags and they are wonderful and we filled them and delivered 100 bags to um, seniors who do not have natural supports in the community, no family members or spouses or neighbors who help them but are, are truly alone. So that was incredibly helpful. Um, they sponsored a concert outside. They um, sponsored our Thursday evenings again, and they're, they're um, providing a program in partnership with the History Center that highlights a different neighborhood each month, a different neighborhood of Fairfield. It's called Where's Walt? He's one of the historians there. And he'll, you know, dig into the history of Greenfield Hill or the beach or Stratfield and each month be in a different, a, a different location. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, they also have been doing fundraising online and um, changing it up a little bit. They did a Boscov's, that's a store in Milford at the mall, um, allows a day of, of a giving day. So if you go and go shopping there you, and mention a charity, that charity gets a percentage of the proceeds. And they also were doing that on Amazon through Amazon Smile. Um, and that's new as of yesterday. They, just, they um, told us that yesterday. So they're, they've been busy. Um, you know, it's, it, it, COVID is changing everything. You know, they're doing their evening programs via Zoom. Um, and it's, it's impressive. They're doing a nice job. That's right. Um, Julie, you just reminded me of something. Sorry, this mm -hmm. is Bernie. Um, if they're doing Amazon Smile, it means that they must have gotten their 50C3 designation. Yep, they've had that for quite some time. Okay, I remember the application process, but I, yeah. I just didn't connect with the uh, getting it. So that's good to know. It is good. So they can, they can apply for grants and things like that now. 
They can. Yes, that's wonderful. All right. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah, I agree. All right. Um, Any questions about well, thank friends? Thank you for that, Julia. Any questions mm -hmm. on that? All right, thank, thank you. Them, um, Yes, they they have made a, a difference, I believe. I, I mean, the uh, the bags um, for the um, the hurricane bags and things like that are actually. I, I think it's just tremendous that the department is involved in distributing those. So they have made a difference. Yeah, months. they have. So. Yep. All right. Um, moving on to new business, uh, the nominating committee. Um, if I may, just introduce this by saying um, that. Uh, you may recall at the last meeting, in George's absence, I nominated him <laughs> to serve as chair of the nominating committee. And my thinking it would have been a little bit earlier than usual, but my thought process behind that was that we do have uh, expiring terms. And since then, we've learned about the developments of um, the commission, CPD com uh, commission, and what that might mean for membership. So um, I just want to let commission members know that um, there are four expiring terms among the current membership that expire in November. And the guidance that we've gotten from the First Select Women's Office is that um, partial terms, they're, they're trying to regularize the length of terms. So, it, um, so with the four expiring terms, three of the members are uh, eligible for reappointment. And the first, the office has asked us if we could um, let them know if those members are willing to serve or are interested in serving on a second term. And I've asked uh, those members individually whether or not they would be willing to um, go on for a second term. Um, there is one vacancy, uh, and we are have been asked to submit candidates for that vacancy. I'm aware of at least one, and there may be others. Um, but the intent would be um, to have, um, if we have nominations, it's to get them either to Julie or myself, and we'll make sure that they are over to the First Select Women's Office. Um, so Bernie, that this is Laura. Wouldn't Loretta's yeah. term also be expiring? Because she's moving over? Um, I had, uh, yes. Um, but here's what I, the guide, well, we had this discussion, and I, I'm, Glad you raised it because I'd, I'd like to open it up. And Julie, please, yeah. if you think I'm um, either not correctly uh, addressing this, um, please intervene. But my thought on this one was that until the commission is established, I was suggesting to Loretta that she consider being reappointed to the Human Services Commission. And then when the commission is established, makes a transfer uh, creating a vacancy on human services. Um, oh, that makes so, sense. Right. Uh, so I think there would be a degree of continuity there, um, and then it would be uh, an opportunity uh, in the new program year to have a vacancy filled. And I'm not trying to be uh, manipulative about the process here at all, but I think it just it didn't make sense for Loretta to give up her term, have a vacancy pending the organization of the Human Services Commission, and the terms expire next month. The, the intent is that the, the expiring members would be reappointed and the vacancy filled prior to the November meeting, and that's to accommodate elections in December. So that was my thought on it, and that's, uh, I, that's the sort of suggestion that I made to Loretta. Uh, and, of course, it's her decision, but there we are. I, it's, right. it's Linda. I, I agree with what you just said, Bernie. The other thing is the vacancy. Doesn't that have to be a specific uh, party affiliation? Um, my understanding. No. From the balance. I want to thank George for his uh, going through the charter. My understanding is that the the party affiliation is not to exceed five from any one party right. on the commission, and with the vacancy. Uh, my understanding, again, is that the candidate can go, uh, can identify with any of the three strands, Republican, Democrat, or unaffiliated, and still oh, be appointed. Uh, because right. we're, just how the numbers currently stand, even with the, all three of the other 
expiring terms are reappointed, the new candidate can affiliate any, can be one of three different affiliations. Okay, thanks. Right. And, I, and Bernie, now, I would, uh, that's my it, reading of it, go George. Ahead. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, I think you're correct. Um, and this is George, and I agree uh, with what you said regarding Loretta's uh, spot. I think it makes eminent sense. Um, I would hate to see Loretta give up the seat and then for any reason, if the commission isn't finally approved, not have a seat. So um, I think that makes sense. And assuming Loretta does move over to uh, the Disability Commission, uh, then there'll be an opening for virtually a full four-year term, presumably. So if it's okay with Loretta, I think that would be a, a logical way to do it. It would be my okay. honor to continue. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> Until you get a better offer. Makes sense. <laughs> I didn't know okay. pressure like that could work on a conference call, but thank you. <laughs> and and, and then it. you can be the official liaison between the two commissions. Is that what we're thinking of? It's Who, oh, that, yeah. that I would be, Loretta would be? Yes. Would you remain on human service? I'm just trying to clarify. No, she can't. No, Loretta no, I, 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 to serve. I understand right. that you can't be a member of two commissions. Gotcha. Um, so there's um, and there and I, I think there's some exceptions, but they're they're in the charter. But um, right, as the I exception. See it now, I, don't, I don't think you could have be a, a member of the human services and the proposed uh, commission for people with disabilities. Okay. Right. You could not be a member of both of those commissions. We can have a liaison. That's a different, right. that's not a member of the new commission. Um, and one of the exceptions is Board of Health, and that's what enables Carolyn uh, to serve on the Board of Health. Right. And right. That's on the I was going with commission that. at the same time. Right, right. exactly. It happens on that is an exception. Well, it happens on the elected levels as well. Right. Um, by the so, way, Bernie, I... Bernie. Sorry, go ahead, George. Just, I don't know if you've heard from her, but I coincidentally uh, was driving down the street this morning, uh, leaving a client's house, and Barbara Paris was walking up the street. Um, yeah. So I stopped long enough to say, Barbara, do you want to continue? And she said yes. So, All right. Well, thank you for that. All right. So we're good there. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, George. Um, so that was the context. So um, I think all things being equal, George will chair the nominating committee. Uh, Suzanne, you've, I believe, volunteered at the last meeting to serve with George. And anyone else who would like to serve on the, um, the committee, just please contact George. And the goal would okay. be, I think, to have um, at least uh, the commission, the committee report at the December meeting and possibly have the election at the December meeting because I think the terms are calendar year terms for officers. I think we need, it's Julie, I think we need to be sure that the reappointments, um, I, I think they have to be approved by RTM and, and Board of Selectmen or maybe just Board of Selectmen. I don't think we, we just say yay. Um, oh no, they have to be. They have to be appointed. My understanding is they have to be appointed by the board of selectmen. Right. They have to be right. So it might be premature to um, elect a, a new chair and things until we have that. I'm, oh, field. sorry, that was pending reappointment. I'm sorry. Forgive gotcha. me. I, okay. Yes, gotcha. It, yes. If you, it, it, my, I'm, I'm anticipating that the reappointments will be made in November for the November yeah. meeting. I'm sorry. I you did say that. Sorry about that. Okay, and that you would, and then presumably you would be able to elect the slate of officers at your December meeting. Right. Okay, um, but it is it is subject to board of selectmen appointment. But uh, the correspondence I had with Jen was that they're hoping to do that um, prior to the November meeting. That's great. All right. So. Um, George, I hope I didn't steal too much of your thunder, but is there anything else that you want to add to that? Or? <laughs> Feel free to take all the thunder. <laughs> no, it's fine. Thank you. <laughs> all right. And if any member is willing to serve with George, please just contact him directly. Right. All right. Um, Julie, you're up. All righty. So the department update. Um, we have a, we're 
we're busy even though we're closed. We've got a couple things to report to you. Um, Fairfield Senior Advocates is partnering with um, business school students at Sacred Heart do, who are doing their capstone project, and they are researching uh, senior facilities and housing options in Fairfield. Um, so I had an opportunity to speak with them about perspective from my point of view about um, Fairfield and housing and what's going on. And when they have that report, I'm certain they would come and um, give us an overview of it. It's, it's pretty exciting. The students are, are master's levels. They're, um, they ask great questions, so I'm looking forward to that. We are in the midst of um, energy season, and we are very busy. What's great this year is that um, the First Select Woman has her weekly update, and if you read it, you see that there's a mention of energy assistance, and it went out to the schools. So we're really getting a lot more new clients who are unknown to us, and that's fabulous because then we get to screen them for other services, other resources, though it, it makes us that much more busy or that much busier. Um, we're also, it's also open enrollment for Medicare. Um, we have a volunteer who does that, uh, and that's, that's going to be very busy as well. And we started our holiday giving program, which is, uh, um, you know, when we do the gift cards and the gifts and give to families who need it and fair, need that kind of support in Fairfield. Um, this year we are only doing gift cards and um, gift certificates for activities because of COVID. And for the most part, I think there's one senior center or one social services department that I've heard of so far in Connecticut, and we're on that big 169 town team. Only one so far is doing any kind of physical gifts. Everybody else is doing gift cards. So that call is going out in Brenda's, um, the First Select Woman's update tomorrow. Um, you'll see if you have an opportunity to read the newsletter that we are starting our online registration with our membership database. Our goal is to have that fully functional by January and have people kind of ease into it. We still cannot accept money online yet, and we're, I'm working on that. That's taking a while. But we can do the registrations, and some of the seniors are starting to use it. It's user-friendly. It's um, very intuitive. So that's great news for us. Um, I'm still interviewing for senior center directors. We've got a lot of interested people, in that, so that's taking a while. And lastly, when the um, – this is not about the department, but I just forgot to mention, when the Committee for People um, with Disabilities goes forward at the Board of Select me, um, meeting to be a commission, I would urge you to attend that. You know, that's a, I, I know as a commission we're looking for things to sink our teeth in, but that is that measure of support would go a long way. And um, I know it would mean a lot to me because this has been a long thing, uh, I mean, a long project. But um, it's really, really important to demonstrate that the commission as a whole really supports it. And that is it for me. Any questions? Sorry, any questions yeah, for Julie? Uh, Julie oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> it's Suzanne, Julie. Hi. Um, just wondering, do you have a plan for those four adults um, who either wish to join or wish to renew that don't have access to the internet, that um, are not computer literate? Um, yes. Do you have a mail-in system for those people, and how do you know who? How do you know how to capture those people? Um, we sent home to our um, with our hundred emergency bags, and with our lunches once a week, we send home membership forms. Um, oh, we put in the newsletter to call if you um, can't sign up on your own, and part of the system allows um, Nora at the front desk or Janet or me or the, whomever the senior center director is going to be to, uh, to have, accept somebody have on a phone call or at the desk and sign that and register them um, either, you know, on the phone or in person. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for the most part, our seniors are technologically savvy. You know, there's a, maybe 10% aren't and, and they're the um, seniors who, we are very, very happy to help. We did send to 5,000 people the membership form and a letter explaining why. So every single active member of the senior center and those who haven't been here, you know, we, we did a five-year average and got 5,000 people. We sent that out. And we got back some, not all, but we got back some for people who are not computer savvy. Oh, got you. Okay, great. Yeah. 
Um, Julie, may I ask a question uh, related to the TPD? You may recall we did a survey a town wide. Well, it was it was, supposed, it was town wide, but we did a survey monkey survey mm -hmm. on for on disability. Yep. I just can't remember where that was hosted. Was that the town site, or did we use a member site or something like that? We for that survey, I, we I think we did use Survey Monkey. We did use Survey Monkey, but I think it was the town's account. Um, I, I just need to, because I'm thinking, uh, and I had a very preliminary conversation with Loretta about this, about possibly looking at was there were comments on that about willingness to participate or be on a commission or be on a committee, and it might be a useful source for potential candidates. Um, and that's the only, and I, I think I have some documentation on it, but I just, I'll, I'll check and let yeah. everyone know. I will look and see if I can find that um, in Terry's documents as well. And also, we do have the mental health um, breakfast mailing list and a kind of a rough draft of people we were considering for the um, stakeholders breakfast. So yes, we could perfect. probably talk about, about that, that as well. Distribution list. Yes. Yeah. That would be a good source as well. Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you, Julie. Any questions for Julie? Any other questions? Julie, the meal counts for meals distributed uh, was getting pretty high. Do you have a recall? Oh. Of um, I haven't tallied it up since the end of September. So, I mean, add another maybe two, maybe another 240. We were at 6,000 in September. Yeah, it's just a remarkable accomplishment that I just yeah. want to keep Notif recognizing that in the minutes of the meeting. So thank you for yeah. that. Yeah, thanks. It is great. Um, we could not, and, and just as long as we're there, we could not have delivered without um, the CERT team. They are, they have been remarkable. All right. Any other questions for Julie? Any new business? Okay. Well, hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to conclude. So moved. Thank you, George. A second. Linda, I'll second. Second by Laura. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Um, so thank you again, and I hope everyone has a pleasant evening, and a, we'll hear you or see you in November. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks. Thank, thank you all. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.